Hi, welcome to my channel. I've been flying radio-controlled aircraft since about 1982. I built this particular one in 1993 or 92, I believe, somewhere around there. But I have been flying these for a very long time without ever really getting into the nit nuts and bolts, nitty-gritty of the theory of what makes an aircraft fly. But I've been recently considering designing my own aircraft, so I'm taking a little bit more interest in the aerodynamic principles and design parameters that might be critical in order to create something that actually flies. So I thought I'd create this short video in case it's of use or interest to somebody else who might be getting involved in the hobby or maybe has been in the hobby and is considering building their own airplane or whatever. Hopefully this information will be helpful and useful. I'm going to try to consolidate just the very preliminary basics into this video and hopefully keep it as short as possible. And like that there. So let's begin. Like I said, I have an aircraft here. I'm going to take the wing off of it. The wing is actually what makes it fly, but I, I want to pick this up <clears throat> so I can maneuver it around to illustrate some of the principles here. But first of all, there are four forces that act upon an airplane, four basic forces. First of all, we have gravity. Gravity is the force that's trying to pull this plane to the ground. That's what keeps it sitting on the ground. And you might think if you turn it around from a perspective of relativity, that there's a force pushing up on the plane to keep it from going any further down that's providing lift. So the ground is the lowest potential of where your aircraft can sit because it can't go any further below the ground, but we can lift it up and I'm providing lift, which is the second force that acts upon the aircraft, to bring it up into the air. And that is the function of the wing. And we'll touch on what the wing does a little later, but the wing provides a force of lift that opposes the force of gravity. And when a plane is flying straight and level, that is at a balance point between lift and gravity. So it's maintaining altitude. So what creates the lift in a wing is the air that's moving past it. And to provide that airflow over the airfoil, we have to move the aircraft through the air. So again, it's kind of a relativity thing. Either you can have air blowing at the plane and that will provide lift, or you can move the plane through the air to create lift to move the air or move the plane through the air, which is the same thing as the air moving past the plane. But the idea is we have this force that we call thrust, which is moving the plane forward, and that's provided by the power plant here, or the engine. And the propeller on here is just like another wing. It's a rotating wing. It's got an airfoil on it. As it spins, it pulls air through the prop and blows it past the plane. And that movement creates thrust, which tends to pull the air through the air, pull the aircraft through the air with this acting like a screw. You can kind of think of it as screwing, turning through the wind, through the air. And that forward motion is called thrust. And as the aircraft moves through the air, the air is providing a resistance across the airframe. It's hitting up against the engine, blowing over the face of the plane, over the landing gear, the tail feathers, the whole structure is experiencing what we call drag, which is the fourth force that's acting on the aircraft. So we have gravity that's pulling it down, lift that's pulling it up, thrust that's moving it forward, and drag that's trying to keep it from moving forward and push it back the other direction. So those are the four basic forces that act upon the aircraft. Now, in order to make an aircraft fly, it's very critical, very important to consider where this balance is. And so there's a couple of terms that you'll hear about frequently, one of which is the center of gravity. You might also hear a term called center of mass. In physics, these are a little different. They can be different. They can be in different places. But at this scale, in this uniform gravity field that we experience here on the surface of the Earth, we can consider the center of gravity and the center of mass as the same thing. And basically all it is, and I'm going to refer to it as the center of gravity, 
but it is where the airplane balances. Now at this point, my aircraft balances about there. And for a good rule of thumb, you want the plane to balance somewhere between 25% and 33% of the total cord of the air of the of the wing. The cord is the length of the wing from front to back. So 25% back between there and 33% back, or a quarter or a third, somewhere in there is where you want the plane to balance. So the balance point, the center of gravity, is actually where the plane physically balances against the force of gravity. That's what we call it, the center of gravity. It's kind of a theoretical point in the aircraft where you can consider the total force of gravity on this airframe at the point where it balances. So you could replace this whole aircraft with like a marble of the same weight, and that's where it would balance. But now, I'm really looking at this in terms of this pitch axis. Since we're considering three-dimensional space, we have three axes to consider here. We have the pitch axis, which is the axis that runs this way, and the aircraft rolls upon that axis, or rotates on that axis. But we also have the roll axis, which is the axis that runs through the middle of the plane going in this direction, and the plane will rotate on that axis. We call that the roll axis. And the third axis is running straight down from top to bottom, through this direction, and that is the yaw axis. So as the aircraft rotates around that, that's called the yaw axis. And I'll go over the control surfaces here in a second, but the point where all these axes intersect at the balance point is where that center of balance is. So it's somewhere actually inside the aircraft. It's you know not in the actual point you can mark on the airframe, but it's somewhere inside the aircraft, in the center. And that is the point around which your aircraft will pivot in all these axes as it flies through the air. So to provide control along all these three axes, we have various control surfaces. In the tail here, we have the elevator, which is on the, the horizontal stabilizer. This whole piece back here is called the horizontal stabilizer. It acts kind of like a, a, a small wing. And it provides a control surface here called the elevator, which controls the action, the rotation in the pitch axis. And you can consider the length of this distance from the center of gravity to the center of the horizontal stabilizer as the moment arm. So that's how much leverage you have. It takes very little force back here to actually pivot the aircraft. And the longer the tail, the more action you'll get out of less force back here. So you can have one of your design considerations if you're building an aircraft is how far do you want your tail to be to provide the level of control that you want. Now on the vertical axis here, the um, this, the yaw axis, we have a vertical stabilizer. It's just like the horizontal stabilizer except it's in this direction. And we have the rudder on the back here which provides control for rotating on the yaw axis. And then the third axis which is the roll axis, that control comes in the form of ailerons on the wing. I just happen to have a wing here that has ailerons on it. And you can see that each wing, each side has its own control. And in order to make the wing rotate one direction or the other, we can put one up and one down to make it go this way, or one, put that one down, this one up to make it rotate this way. So we have that control over rotating in that axis. Now as far as balancing the aircraft, there's another term that you might hear called center of lift. You might also hear it as center of pressure. And taking a look at another wing here, it's the same wing. This wing does not have aileron. You might think, well, how do you control the, the roll axis if you don't have ailerons? Well, I'm getting a little sidetracked, but this relates to balance. 
because you can simulate the roll axis by using a combination of control of the rudder and the elevator. Because if you swing it this way and pitch it this way, the aircraft, as it's flying, will tend to yaw or it will tend to roll a little bit and it will roll into the turn. So if you want to turn right, swing the tail this way and it will just naturally rotate that way. And that will create a difference in lift in your left wing versus your right wing, which will help you make your turn. So I don't need ailerons. You don't absolutely need ailerons in order to fly, but it gives you a lot better positive control, especially in windy conditions, especially on landings and takeoffs, where you might get a, a crosswind, which will pick up one way or the other, and you want to roll your aircraft back level and regain control. But back to the point of balancing, there's another force acting on this wing, not a force, but it's, it's called the center of lift, which you might also hear the center of pressure. And it's similar to the center of balance in that it is a point along the airframe or the airfoil. This airfoil has a flat bottom and curved top. And this particular airfoil provides lift. And the lift is occurring pretty much all across the top of this wing. But there's one central point where you can imagine that if this wing were hanging on a piece of string, that that's where it would balance. And that's considered the, the center of lift or center of pressure. That's where you have the most, your combined lift acting on that single point. So that's kind of a point of balance in a sense, but it becomes important when you consider that center of lift in relation to where your center of gravity is. Because if your center of lift is right directly over your center of gravity, then you have a perfect balance there. The problem is it's not entirely stable. Now, if you have your center of lift behind the center of gravity so that your, your airplane, your airframe, your physical airframe will balance in front of where the lift is acting, then that will tend to make your aircraft nose heavy. So to, to understand what I mean, what, what is meant by nose heavy versus tail heavy, is nose heavy is a condition where your center of gravity is in front of your center of lift. You have more physical weight in front of your center of lift because the, the aircraft by gravity will balance at this point here. But if you're lifting it from a point further back, I can't really do it with the wing on. So you can see that my center of gravity is here. Now, if my center of lift on the wing is behind that and I pick it up, it's gonna, the airplane is gonna tend to fall this way because the center of gravity hasn't changed. The center of gravity will not change and does not change in flight. With one exception, I have this fuel tank up here. Fuel has mass, mass has weight. So the more fuel I have up here, the more weight I'm going to have in my nose. So when my fuel tank is full, my aircraft will balance up further. My center of gravity is going to move forward because I'm putting more weight over here and I have to move where I grab the plane for it to balance. Now, as I use fuel, the, the front end becomes lighter and lighter because I'm burning fuel. I no longer carry as much fuel. So now my aircraft is becoming tail heavy because my center of gravity is moving back. Well, actually, it's not becoming tail heavy. My center of gravity is moving back. What determines whether the plane is nose heavy or tail heavy is in relation to your center of lift. If my center of lift is back here, my airplane is nose heavy. If this tank were full of fuel, it would be even more nose heavy. If my center of lift is closer up here, it wouldn't be quite as nose heavy. Because there's a moment arm, just like you have an arm back here that's pitching my aircraft this way, you have a moment arm between that center of lift and center of gravity that can determine how stable your aircraft is. The further forward your center of gravity is from your center of lift, the more nose heavy your plane is. And therefore, the more control you have to put on the back 
to counter that. You can give it a little up trim to put some pressure on the tail to push the tail back down to balance it out. But now you're inducing more drag. So the more nose heavy your aircraft is, the more drag you'll have back here, but your aircraft will be very stable. Now, if your center of gravity, if your airplane balanced back here and your center of lift was in front of that, then your aircraft becomes very sensitive. Any little control movement back here makes a large movement up here because now you're balancing the aircraft that's tail heavy because if your air center of lift is in front of your center of gravity, your center of gravity or center of mass is back here and you're hanging here, it's gonna fall this way. And you can consider that moment arm, now your center of lift is in front and your center of gravity is in the back. You can kind of think of that as like pushing a trailer. It's very easy to pull a trailer behind a vehicle, a land vehicle, but try to push that trailer and it's gonna to tend to wanna to veer left to right. In this case, if you have your center of lift ahead of your center of gravity, it's like pushing a trailer. Your airplane is gonna to wanna to just go all over the place and you're gonna be on the controls trying to stabilize it in the yaw and pitch direction and maybe even the roll. So it's important to consider where you want your center of gravity versus your center of lift and the relationship between those two as you fly, especially if you've got an imbalanced consumable weight that's being carried on your aircraft. So that is the very basics, fundamental baseline basics of aerodynamics and things that you can take from here in your exploration in learning more about what it takes to make an aircraft fly. Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please like and share this video if you think there's somebody else who might benefit from it. And thanks for watching. And remember, don't ever grow up.